Capitalist uh, 52, part 4, I'm in the middle of paragraph 6. Uh, Madison is discussing uh, what happened, what has happened in the British history. Uh, how often they have changed, uh, how frequently the Parliament, the House of Commons, were to go up for an election. And he's talking about under this king, it was three years, and then they changed it to seven years, and then they changed it back to three years. And he just constantly is looking at them to eventually say that a two-year term for members of House of Representatives or election of the members of House of Representatives every two years sounds to be the best idea. So I'll start again from middle of paragraph six where he says, uh, by another statute which passed a few years later in the same reign, the term frequently which had alluded to the triennial period. Sorry, I had an interruption there. So uh, we got to what the time of Charles II, that's in 1600s is reduced to a precise meaning, it being expressly enacted that a new parliament shall be called within three years after the determination of the former. The last change from three to seven years is well known to have been introduced pretty early in the present century uh, under an alarm for the Hanoverian succession. Uh, in 17, now remember, Glorious level Revolution happened in 1688-89. Uh, the British did not want a Catholic to take, to become king in England. So they found uh, one of the uh, uh, princesses, British princesses that was married to uh, Prince of Orange. This is Orange to her Holland is province of Orange in Germany, that area. Uh, they, uh, they actually accepted William of Orange as their king, but they made sure that he, uh, as they say, agrees to certain things before he even becomes the king of England, that he would not violate uh, and oppress people, uh, destroy their liberty. That's why they call it the Glorious Revolution. So he says, after the Glorious Revolution, a few years later, because of certain reasons, in 1716, he says beginning of the century, because they were living in 1700s, in 1716, they changed the terms of the... Uh, They turned the, term, the uh, elections from seven, from three year, every three years to seven years. So that's what he's talking about here. From these facts, it appears that the greatest frequency of elections, which has been deemed necessary in that kingdom, for binding the representatives to their constituents, does not exceed a triennial turn of them. And that we may argue from the degree of liberty retained even under septennial elections, remember septennial every seven years, and all the other vicious ingredients in the parliamentary constitution, we cannot doubt that a reduction of the period from seven to three years with the other necessary reforms would so far extend the influence of the people over their representatives as to test as to satisfy us that biennial elections under the federal system cannot possibly be dangerous to the requisite dependence of the House of Representatives on their constituents. So with the British experience, we can conclude that a two-year term every an election every two years from members of the House of Representatives is not going to be dangerous to people's liberties. It'll be good for them. 
Then in the next paragraph, he talks about what their experience has been in Ireland. Elections in Ireland till of late were regulated entirely by the discretion of the crown and were seldom, seldom repeated except on the accession of a new prince or some other contingent event. The parliament which commenced with George II was continued through his whole reign, a period of about 35 years. The only dependence of the representatives on the people consisted in the right of the latter to supply occasional vacancies by the election of new members and in the chance of some event which might produce a general new election, the ability also of the Irish, Irish Parliament to maintain the rights of their constituents so far as the disposition might exist was extremely shackled by the control of the crown over the subjects of their deliberations. Shackled means chained. It's totally in the hands of the crown. Of these, of late, these shackles, if I mistake not, have been broken. And octennial parliaments have besides been established what effect may be produced by this partial reform must be left to further experience. The example of Ireland, from this view of it, can throw but little light on the subject. As far as we can draw any conclusion from it, it must be that if the people of that country have been able, under all these disadvantages, to retain any liberty whatever, the advantage of biennial elections would secure to them every degree of liberty which might depend on a due connection between their representatives and themselves. So really, we can't learn that much from what has happened in Ireland, of Britain, British history, you know, this back and forth between three-year elections, seven-year elections. And now, you know, as of uh, early 1900s, it's every five years, okay? But back then it was back three to seven, three to seven. He says, well, with the system we have, the way things are here, every two years would be perfect. And again, I cannot overemphasize the fact that you have to keep the distances back then, the lack of roads, no motorized vehicle, nothing that would run with steam engine yet, how long it would take for some of these representatives to go to the capital, okay? They hadn't elected, they hadn't chosen this country's capital yet, but they knew it was gonna be somewhere in the middle of the 13 colonies. So I knew that it's going to take a while for people to go from Georgia, South Carolina, all the way to uh, Philadelphia or anywhere close to Philadelphia. So definitely keep distance, keep geography uh, on your mind as we go through these, because it's, it's very important to know that when these people were talking about space and distance, uh, what they were thinking about. One of the huge, huge advantages and blessings that Americans got at the head start was so vast amount of land was available to them, was going to be available to them. And uh, that gave elbow room enough for this experiment to work out. And that is very, very important uh, for uh, understanding um, the course of American history and civilization. 